Good morning. Hi, I'm Mrs. Arnold. We are going to be reading from Nacella today. And I'm going to share my screen with you. How are, are you all today? Wonderful. And back for another reading lesson, reading comprehension. And so today we have a law article here. And it's entitled, I Sick School Bus Driver Reported Years of Harassment Over His Turban and Beard. Hmm, this one sounds like it's going to be a lot of fun, saying sarcastically, huh? Um, it's a harassment, discrimination, or stereotyping, I should say, harassment type article. And so after we complete our um, reading, we're going to go into our activities uh, section and complete a, an eight-question quiz. And after our quiz, we will follow up with an exit question. Please have some paper and a pencil or pen handy to record um, your exit question. And just in case you're not given a quiz worksheet, which you should, um, please feel free to also record your quiz answers on that same paper with your exit question. Okay, so now we begin. Some who notice his turban and unsured beard called him a terrorist. Others taunted that he was Osama bin Laden. From nearly, his, from nearly his first day as a school bus driver in a Maryland suburb of Washington. So when they're seeing, seeing an observant seat, said he was targeted for the way he looked. Hmm. I want to see what year this took place. Published in April 2019. Okay. Um, so the harassment came from co-workers, hmm, supervisors, and students, he said. Wow. One day while driving the roads of Montgomery County, Maryland, which I used to live there in that area, um, stationed with the Navy, he missed the turn only to have a large group of middle schoolers aboard shout that he was kidnapping them. The driver is going to blow up the bus, he recalls them yelling. But 13 years into his career with the county school system, Singh, 45 now, 45 years old, is turning a page on those experiences as his lawyers and school officials settle issues raised in a complaint filed with the Federal Equal Employment Opportunity Commission in 2016. The agreement expected to be announced on May 28th includes efforts to improve cultural education and training on recognizing bias with things, which Singh says he hopes will lead to a greater understanding among employees and students of Sikhs and other religious minorities in the diverse school system. His attorneys say the case could have a broad reach nationally given Montgomery County's stature as one of the country's largest and most well-regarded school systems. Hmm. If a school district of its caliber is doing this, then other districts will take notice, said Amrith Kaur, legal director for the Sikh Coalition, a civil rights organization representing Sikh. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> Sorry. Excuse me. Um, representing scene. I hope that it's a wake up call for the other districts and for other employees. <laughs> oh, excuse me again. I hope that it's a wake up call for other districts and for other employees. Of course, Court's uh, organization, which has represented hundreds of hate crime clients over the past 18 years, 
said six in America, six in America, America are hundreds of times more likely than the average American to experience bias. Many are targeted because of their skin color, turbans, uncut hair, and religious faith. Some, including Singh, uh, also, or in, some, including Singh, are also immigrants. This is an issue that continues to grow and it's not going away, Cora said. Uh, so his name is Singh, he's a Sikh, and of course his uh, religion, and yeah, sometimes it get twisted saying the name and the religion reading all that together. So, school system officials said in a statement that they investigated each allegation Singh made and took swift corrective action with staff members and students who engaged in offensive behavior. They said they are committed to providing a safe and welcoming environment citing training efforts on cultural proficiency and implicit bias, along with broader effects to address hate bias incidents in schools. So bias, discrimination, um, it turns out um, uh, that is involved. And so um, it sounds like he's suing the schools for it. In response to incidents cited by Singh, school officials say they conducted face-to-face -face training on workplace bullying among transportation department workers in 2016, published a staff newsletter story in 2016 about Singh to highlight his background and experiences and listed him as a resource for teachers on seat or South Asian cultural programs. We do not and will not tolerate behavior that is hateful, bigoted, racist, or discriminatory, the statement said. Seeing a father of three uh, who lives in Clarksburg and his two children in the school system started his job in 2006. He was a musician and music teacher in India and a devotional singer at Golden Temple, the holiest shrine in the Sikh religion, he said. He moved to the United States in 1999 after several trips to the country to perform music and later landed a job with the school system's transportation operations, systems, the school system's transportation, transportation operations. Working with the school system to me it was, a kind, it was a kind of honor, and especially working with students and children, he said. I felt that I am going to start their day and end their day. I was very happy about it. But harassment soon followed, he said. An observant Sikh, he said, his unshort hair and beard are integral to his religion and are considered among his articles of faith showing thankfulness and humility and that whatever you are given by God, you keep it, you do not touch it. Mm. In the beginning, Singh did, Singh did not want to make waves and did not report incidents, his lawyers say. He didn't do it the first time or the second time or even the fifth time. Something unfair happened to him, said Carla Gilbride, a senior attorney with Public Justice, a public interest legal organization that joined the Sikh coalition on the case in January 2018. According to the EEOC complaint, equal um, opportunity is what that is, commission, um, co-workers in the transportation department called Singh, called Singh Osama bin Laden, Al-Qaeda, and Taliban. When bin Laden was killed in 2011, it said fellow employees expressed condolences to him 
as if they were related. <clears throat> One supervisor threatened to put duct tape on Singh's beard and pull it off, their document said. And when he said that he did not appreciate the joke, and that his hair was an expression of his religion, he was told he lacked a sense of humor. Many of offensive comments came from students too. The complaint lists 21 incidents he said he reported to school officials from 2011 to 2016, each listed with a date. One student reached out to shake his hand in August 2013 and asked if he had a bomb. A group of students at first refused to board his bus in November 2015, saying he was a terrorist. In February 2016, a student began to board, then stopped back, then stepped back, saying, Look at the driver, we are all going to die today. Singh said that. He struggled, said he struggled with how he was treated. His attorney said that while the school system responded to many incidents reported by Singh, the response was inadequate. These things are, were troubling me all the time. And I came home affecting my sleep. He said, my background is in serving, not harming anybody. Starting in 2011, Singh tried to report major incidents of harassment by students in writing, according to the EEOC complaint. A copy of the EEOC complaint shared with the Washington Post was redacted with names of employees and schools removed. Mm. In 2012, it said the supervisor told him that his efforts to inform students, schools of their behavior, to inform student schools of their behavior would ruin students' education. The supervisor tried to dissuade him from completing paperwork and said he was too easily offended, according to the document. In response to the EEOC complaint, School officials said they denied being liable for discrimination, but believe we can and must work together with the community to ensure all students and staff are treated with respect. Another allegation, Singh's EEOC complaint, said he was denied opportunities for training and advancement and required to do less complex work when compared to my non seek non-South Asian or non-Indian origin colleagues. Singh was promoted to bus route supervisor, but says he was assigned menial tasks. And after the Sikh coalition advocated on his behalf, the complaint said he was retaliated against, written up harshly and dropping, written up harshly for dropping two students off at home rather than at a caregiver's after believing their account that a parent's note had been lost. Let's reread that, it's a little confusing to me. And after the Sikh coalition advocated on his behalf, um, the complaint said he was retaliated against written up harshly for dropping two students off at home rather than at caregivers after believing their account that a parent's note had been lost. Oh, I get, I see. The students um, apparently told him that they didn't have a parent's note, it had been lost, so he dropped them off at home rather than at caregivers because he believed what the students told him. Apparently the students wanted to be dropped off at home. He was suspended without pay for 10 days and cited for a critical offense that prohibits, prohibits promotion for at least three years, a complaint said. Hmm. 
suspended without pay for 10 days and cited for a critical offense because of two, yeah, there were two complaints. Yeah, two students, yeah, he dropped off at home rather than with their caregivers. Okay. And so as a part as part of the settlement, the school system will establish a project team to consider changes to training in initiatives that would make them more interactive and based in real life scenarios and include awareness of the Sikh religion. The two organizations involved in Sikh's case will propose changes that school officials will consider. The first formal proposal is to be offered within 60 days. The goal is a more systemic approach that includes assessing the climate for students and staff of all ethnicities and religions and going beyond individual disciplines, Sikh's lawyers, Singh's lawyers said. The agreement also includes expanded career opportunities for Singh, including a chance to work under a mentor and transfer to another bus de depot. Singh's attorney declined to discuss any potential financial compensation related to the settlement. I wonder if he got his 10 days without payback. Probably that and more, right? Um, and so Singh said that he is happy the school system was willing to work on the agreement and that he hopes processes and procedures improve for other others facing harassment. I'm hoping there would be more enforcement, he said, adding that he does not want to see anyone else have to bear up to similar disparagement. If any employees are being discriminated against, there should be proper investigation. Proper investigations. I want everyone to feel a sense of belonging, he said. The Washington Post, Jennifer Jenkins contributed to, to this report. And that completes our reading section. Um, very informative. Bus driver being harassed for years. And there is a picture. I don't think we enlarged that of seeing with his the unstirred beard that they um, spoke about. Beard and mustache and the turd. His, love that blue turban. I actually have a black one. I wear my hair at night. Um, so that completes our reading and now we'll go uh, zoom back out and go into our activities and start our quiz. So question number one of our quiz, read the following statement. Sawinder Singh was actively discouraged from filing complaints about student harassment, complaints about student harassment. Which selection from the article best supports the idea above? Singh said he struggled with how he was treated. His attorney said that while the school system responded to many incidents reported by Singh, the response was inadequate. Starting in 2011, Singh tried to report major incidents of harassment by students in writing according to the EEOC complaint. A copy of the EEOC complaint shared with the Washington Post was redacted with names of employees and schools removed. In 2012, C, in 2012, it said a supervisor told him that his efforts to inform student schools of the behavior, of their behavior, would ruin students' education. The student tried to, the supervisor tried to dissuade him from completing paperwork and said that he was too easily offended, according to the document. Or D, in response to the EEOC complaint, school officials said they deny being liable for discrimination, but believe we can and must work together with the community to ensure all students and staff are treated with respect. So um, which selection best supports the idea that Sarinder Singh was actively discouraged from filing complaints about student harassment? And I am going to let you reflect on this. I'm going to give you some time um, to answer or pause the video if you need that. And um, then we will collectively review together and answer.
So which selection best supports the idea? And here are some of the options. Excuse me a second. And here are the remaining options. Excuse me. Okay, so let's review together. Which selection best um, from the article best supports the idea? that he was actively discouraged from filing complaints about student harassment. Um, our correct answer here is C, right? Um, in 2012, it said a supervisor told him that his efforts to inform students, schools of their behavior would ruin students' education. The supervisor tried to dissuade him from completing paperwork and said he was too easily offended, according to the document. So that is the one that um, best supports this idea that he was discouraged, discouraged and dissuade um, are two words that mean the same thing. So dissuade is our keyword in that sentence too. He, they, the supervisor tried to dissuade him, tried to discourage him. And so our correct answer is C, best supports the idea, and let's show our answer, and then we have it. Our next question, why did the author conclude the article by describing and quoting Singh's reaction to the settlement? A, to reiterate the idea that the district will be under close media scrutiny with regard to cases like Singh's. B, to emphasize Singh's optimism that he is, his efforts will prevent others from experiencing what he has. C, to elaborate on Singh's disappointment with the school system initial response to his complaints, or D, to refine the sense of goodwill and kindness that Singh quit credit to his devotion to the Sikh religion. Why did the author conclude the article by describing and quoting Singh's reaction to the settlement? And here are the options. Okay, let's answer. So why did author, the author conclude the article by describing and quoting Singh's reaction to the settlement? Our correct answer is B, to emphasize Singh's optimism that his efforts will prevent others experience from, from experiencing what he has. And so let's show our answer B, and there we have it. And our next question is number three. Which of the following statements best represents Amaranth Kaur's approach to Singh's experience? A, Kaur believes that Singh's patience with his harass surge only caused his pain, painful experience to continue and that he waited too long to report the fact that unfair things were being said and done to him at work. B, Kaur states that Singh and other Sikhs are much more likely to face discrimination based on their appearance and religion than other people, and that Singh's case should more, make other employees re-examine their policies. C, Kaur states that Singh's experience will have wider national effects for civil rights organizations and that school districts officials need to take swift corrective action. If any, of, if any of their employees file complaints similar to Singh's, or D, Core believes that Singh was singled out because his unsured hair and beard represent his religion, and that the thankfulness and humility contributing to his harassment helped him get through 
their experience, help him get through the experience. And I will give you time to answer the best statement that represents armor, of course, approach to things experience and armor. Uh, Armoreth, um, of course, uh, he is the person that who represented Singh in that um, coalition, remember, to, uh, that helped his case. So kind of like his attorney, I guess. I don't know if they stated that he was an actual attorney, but um, he was his representative. So that's who court is. And here are our remaining options. And so our correct answer, let's review, which of the following statement best represents um, um, its course approaches things experience? Correct answer is B, core states, core states that seeing and other Sikhs are much more likely to face discrimination based on their appearance and religion than other people and that the Sikhs, and that Sikhs case should make other employees and re-examine their policy. That is the best choice, B. And let's go back and show our answer. And there we have it, B. Number four, what is the meaning of the phrase make waves as used in the following sentence? In the beginning, Singh did not want to make waves and did not report incidents, as lawyers say. A creates a trend or impression create a turn or impression, B, cause difficulty or disruption, C, draw attention or admiration, D, demand a transfer or a promotion. And so which of these accurately describes um, the meaning or defines the meaning of what make a waves, make waves are, he did not want to make waves, so he didn't report the incident. Here are our options, and I'll be right back. Okay, so our correct answer, this one is B, right? Make waves means that he did not want to cause any difficulty or disruption. And that's what making waves are. Um, accurately defined as, and so our correct answer is B again. And let's show our answer. There we have it. To cause difficulty or disruption, make waves. Question number five, read the following paragraphs from the article. In other allegations, think EEOC complaint said he was denied opportunities for training and advancement and required to do less complex work when compared to my non-Sikh and non-South Asian or non-Indian origin colleagues. Singh was promoted to be, or to bus route supervisor, but says he was assigned menial task. And after the Sikh coalition adv advocated on his behalf, the complaint said he was retaliated against, written up harshly for dropping two students off at home, rather than at a caregiver's after believing their account that a parent's note had been lost. Which phrases from the paragraphs help the reader to understand the meaning of menial? Is it A, advocated on his behalf or written up? B, training and advancement promoted to? C, denied opportunities, less complex work? Or D, root supervisor, route supervisor, believe in their account? Which phrase help to um, understand what the meaning of menial is? gave him menial um, tasks he was assigned compared to his counterparts. Give you time to reflect on that one.
And so I could write answer uh, what the phrase that um, para in the paragraph that helps us understand what the word menial is. He was given more menial, menial tasks. Our correct answer is C, right? He was denied opportunities less and given less complex work. Menial means something smaller or beneath you or less complex work or complexness compared to something else. C is our correct answer. And let's show our answer and there we have it. Next question, number six. What purpose is the author attempting to convey by including the following quotes? The bus, the driver is going to blow up the bus, he recalls them yelling. In February 2016, the student began to bore, then stepped back saying, look at the driver, we are all going to die today. A, an emotional appeal to the reader's sense of sympathy for what's being endured. B, an argument that logically indicates why the district needed to improve training. C, an analysis of the way the bigoted comments towards seeing grew over time. And D, or D, an exaggeration of the type of ignorant comments that high school students make. Which of these, um, what is it uh, purpose the author is trying to attempt to convey by including these two quotes? And here are our, and here are the quotes. And here are our uh, options. Okay, so what is the author trying to convey here by those two emotional quotes? A is our great answer, right? An emotional appeal to the reader's sense of sympathy for what's being endured. So let's check our answer, and A is our correct answer. Let's go on to seven. Read the following selection from the article. Working with the school system to me, it was a kind of honor, and especially working with students and children, he said. I felt that I am going to start their day and end their day. I was very happy about it. Which answer choice explains how the author used rhetoric in this selection to construct her overall argument? A, the author illustrates things personal expectations for the job to emphasize the irony of the harassment he experienced. B, the author includes a statement of fact to indicate how things job change his feelings about life in America. C, the author uses an emotional appeal to demonstrate how things religion affected his feelings about going to work. Or D, the author describes things continued optimism about his work to demonstrate the logical reasons for the lawsuit. And um, here's our question again. So what, um, which of these answer choices, which option um, explains how the author used rhetoric in this selection? to construct her overall argument, which she quotes, sings words about how he felt about the school system and so optimism, optimist, um, op optimistic about going to work and the fact that he'd be starting and ending the day and he was happy and then things did not work out the way he saw it because he was not received well by students, staff, or supervisors. And so here are our choices, our options, and this is our final option. Oh, my technology continue to update me. So our um, answer, which answer choice explains how the author used rhetoric in this election? to construct her overall argument. Our correct answer is A, right? The author illustrates things personal expectation for the job to emphasize the irony of the harassment that he experienced. And so A is our correct 
choice, make sure I answer and we have it. Hey. Hey. Uh, last question. Read the following sentences from the article. One, the harassment came from coworkers, supervisors, and students. He said, two, school system officials said in a statement that they investigated each allegation they made and looked and took swift corrective action with staff members and students to engage, excuse me, in offensive behavior. Three, according to the EEOC complaint, co-workers in the transportation department caused being Osama bin Laden, Al-Qaeda, and the ta and Taliban. Four, one supervisor threatened to put duct tape, tape, duct, duct, duct tape on Singh's beard and pull it off the document said, and when he said that he did not appreciate the joke and that his hair was an expression of his religion, he was told he lacked a sense of humor. Which two sentences taken together provide the best evidence to support the claim that Stalinger scene was harassed by adult employees of the district? Is it three and four, two and three, one and two, or one and four? And I'll let you look over them again. Okay, so which of these two sentences taken together provide the best evidence to support the claim that Solomon is saying was harassed by adult employees of the district? These are our options. Okay, so which two sentences taken together provide the best evidence to support the claim that solving their screen was harassed by adult employees of the district? Our correct answer again is A, three and four. And so let's read three and four. Three is, according to the EEOC complaint, co-workers in the transportation department called Sting Osama, called him Osama bin Laden, Al-Qaeda, and Taliban. So these are the direct right quotes of things they called him, not just something somebody else said. So three makes a better option here. And then let's read four. One supervisor threatened to put duct tape on Sting's beard and pull it off, as the document said. And when he said that he did not appreciate the joke, and that his hair was an expression of his religion. He was told he lacked a sense of humor. So that also is a direct quote of what the um, a supervisor said to him, or the co-worker. Uh, I think this is a supervisor. Yeah. And so um, it... Uh, details what the supervisor said and then accused him of not being able to have a good sense of humor after his um, harsh and offensive remarks. So that one definitely also um, represents that the adults, employees of the district also harass seeing. So our correct answer, three and four, is A. And so A is our answer. Let's show our answer. And there we have it, A. And that completes our quiz and our activity.
section. So now we go on to our exit question. So now can you take that paper out? And I will ask you, first of all, let me say, we're gonna turn it around. We're not gonna talk about the discriminatory, discriminatory portion of this article. We read enough about that and how this man was treated horribly, harassed and discriminated against. So let's turn it around and please you, um, for your question, I would like for you to jot down um, uh, something kind that you've done for someone. So just a couple of sentences to kind of detail um, your thoughts on a time that you did something opposite of doing the mean harassment and discriminatory things. Some, um, a time that you recall that you did something kind for someone, even if it was a family member, friend, this person could have been a stranger. Just tell about that, a few lines, if you don't mind sharing and how it made you feel and the other person feel. And that will complete our reading comprehension lesson for today. After you have completed all your work, I would please ask you to turn it in if you have a teacher there present. To the teacher, if not, can you please hand all your work in to the Cotter staff? And Cotter staff, please, once you've collected all work from students, take it down or take it to the uh, PBX admin building. And as always, your help and your support is deeply appreciated. I do, so thank you. And I also want to ask you students, please don't forget to write your names legibly um, so it's able to be read. Don't write nicknames, um, write your full real name and write it where it's clear and it's able to be read. Otherwise, you won't be able to know who you are to grade your papers, right? So thank you for that. And thanks for reading along with me today. Um, I uh, want you guys to make sure you please stay safe out there. Be well, stay safe. And until we um, see each other again on our next learning adventure, have a wonderful rest of your day.